You know, we remember that situation very, very well. We were driving and trying to decide on the GPS whether we needed to stay on the frontage road or get onto the on-ramp. And we were conversing back and forth and I wasn't paying attention. And oh my gosh, talk about a scary situation. But it's those kind of situations that it's nice to have a dash cam. Yes, it was our fault. I will take complete responsibility for that close call because I wasn't paying attention. I didn't check my mirrors as I was pulling onto the on-ramp. I was too busy listening to Kelly and, and checking out the, the GPS. And I got confused. And I didn't see the truck coming. And boy, we just we just missed. Um you know, he had a he had another car on the other side that he couldn't get over, and it was close. But for that reason, uh, for those reasons, we really highly recommend a dash cam. And we've been using a dash cam ever since uh, we've been full-timing, and we think it's very important. If you drive an RV, you know there are situations where people, for some reason, people don't want to get behind an RV whether we're too slow, they think they think we're too slow or they're in a hurry. They do stupid things like, you know, pull in front of us and slam on their brakes or they cut across in front of us uh, because they don't want to be behind us to get the off ramp that's 50 feet in front of us. Uh, it just, we always like to have documentation of what's going on. And so whether it's our fault or their fault, we always like the documentation. Now, we don't normally do video reviews, um, and we, quite honestly, we get requests daily to do video reviews of different products, and we're just, that's just not our channel. But we recently had a subscriber email us and say, hey, we're in the market for a dash cam before we head south this winter, and we know that you recommend the Biofo uh, dash cam, but you had stated about six months ago that you were going to take a look at Biofo's new 4K version and do a review on it. Well, we're finally doing that review. Uh, it's taken us a while, unfortunately, and so we have been using the Biofo uh, a 119 v3 dash cam ever since we started full-timing and it has just been an absolute dream it is so easy to use it's just hook it up power it up and down the road you go and we use a lot of the footage on our videos uh, during our travel videos and so we thought well let's try a 4k version and so Viofa reached out to us and and sent us their 4k a139 uh, pro version and it's it's this one right here and they sent us uh, the camera and we've been using it about six months now and we just thought we'd share some information with you on the differences between the two versions now do you need a 4k dash cam uh, for RVing absolutely not we wanted to try it out because we publish our videos in 4k and we thought we were going to get some better resolution and so we're going to give you our opinion on the 4K Viofo A139 Pro dash cam. All right, to start off, let's talk about why we chose Viofo. We've been full-timing for going on six years, and we needed a dash cam for RV. We recommend everybody have a dash cam for your RV whether you're in a motorhome or you've got a towable, uh, it's just a good practice to have a dash cam uh, to record anything that may happen, whether it's your fault or somebody else's fault. And we chose the Viofo A119 dash cam to begin with. And one of the reasons we did that, uh, we tried out three or four of them. And one of the reasons we decided on the Viofo is because we have an almost vertical windshield here in the Western Star. And we needed a camera that would allow an almost vertical mount. And the Viofo A119 took care of that because the lens, you can move the lens to different locations and it will go vertical like in our Western Star. But when we move it into the smart car, we can 
it's got a sloped windshield and we can move the lens down as well. The same thing with the new A139 4K. It also has a rotatable lens and we can put it vertically uh, in the truck. Uh, we don't use it in the car. We haven't put it in the car, but it would work just as well in a smart car as well because it, you can move the lens on it as well. Now, the, the difference in size between these two is not all that significant, but there are some differences between these two cameras. Number one, the A119 has a viewfinder on the back. We find that very, very useful because both of these cameras mount on VHB tape, sticky back tape mounts. You stick them to your windshield and it's there permanently. Now, both of these cameras, if I remember correctly, I know the A119 does. I'm pretty sure the A139 comes with two mounting plates so you can transfer it between vehicles. You can put it in your tow vehicle and then if you have a tow behind, uh, you can mount it in that as well and use it when you're going into town or out for groceries. The A119 uses a micro USB connection uh, to power it up. Neither one of these have internal batteries. So the, the A119 has a micro USB connection for the power. The A139 has the USB-C version, which is more predominant now today. Uh, companies are getting away from the micro USB and going to the USB-C. Um, but if you're just powering the camera, you probably really don't care. That's all that that connection is good for. Both have micro USB cards uh, inserted into the camera. The A139 now will allow you to put a 512 gigabyte micro USB card in here. And that comes in really handy because sometimes we put in 10 hour days and we use our footage in our videos. And so we don't want it rolling through. If you have a smaller USB card in both of these cameras, it will roll through. Once it gets full, it will roll through and start uh, writing over the first files of the day. And we didn't want that. So this one, the new camera will take a, a 512 gigabyte card. I think we have a 256 gigabyte card in the A119. Both have been doing a great job on uh, long travel day trips. Both of these cameras also have the ability to hit a, a button. You just click the button and it will save that video file and won't write over the top of it if you have a an event where somebody cuts you off or, or whatever the case may be. Uh, the same thing on the A139. You just press the button and it automatically saves that footage and will protect it and it won't write over it. Now the A119 when it fits on in its mount, you just put it up on the mount and slide it down. The A139 is a little bit different in that you you put, you put it on the mount and you, you slide it to the left. And both mounts have worked extremely well for us. The A139 comes standard with a polarizer filter, which we found kind of handy, especially on bright sunny days when you're driving into the sunlight. Uh, it will polarize the video and it won't be a glaring bright and you can actually see what's on the video. Both cameras have the ability to record audio with the video and both cameras have the ability to either show your speed and GPS location on the video footage or turn that completely off, which we do because we use the, the footage in, in our videos. Okay, let's talk about what we personally don't care for uh, it, between the two cameras. We can't find anything that we don't care for in the A119. As I said, you just put it in the mount in any vehicle, you set it, you forget it, and you're good to go. The A139, is a little more complicated because it does not have a viewfinder on the camera itself you have to connect it via wi-fi to your smartphone and then once you connect it via wi-fi then you can go in and see what 
you're viewing on the camera. There's no way to see what you're viewing on the camera on the camera itself. You have to do it via smartphone. And if you want to change the settings on the A139, then you have to connect it to the smartphone as well. And there are a number of settings that you scroll through on your smartphone to find what you're looking for, whether it be turn the GPS on or off, turn the speed uh, display on or off, increase the resolution on the camera, change your resolution from 180p to 4K to 2K. You have to do that via the smartphone. And you guys know us well enough. I, I'm a simple guy. I just want to set it, forget it, be done, and move on. And so for me, this has been a little more complicated uh, to set. Once you get your settings set, then you're good to go. But it's nice to be able to set the camera in to your vehicle. And if you want to change the settings, then you, you press the menu button, you scroll through the settings, and you can change them right on the camera. You don't have to go through a smartphone to do that. If I have anything I didn't like about the A139, it's the fact that I have to connect it to my smartphone to change any of the settings or see what my camera lens is viewing out the window. And I just, as I say, I just like to set it and forget it. Now, is the 4K a bad camera? Heck no. You can see the difference in resolution between the two cameras. On the left, you'll see the A119 in a 10 or in a in a 1080p version on the right you'll see the 4k version you can still read the signs you can still see the vehicles and uh, it, it's 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 good pictures but if you're not looking for 4k footage to put on or to save 4k footage uh, then the the 139 really in our opinion uh, makes no difference for us. Just if you, all you're looking for is a dash cam, this A119 is the way to go. Now, the pluses on the A139 are the fact that you can connect interior cameras in a, in a rear camera. Uh, for us, we tried the interior camera and it just, it, it just wasn't good enough for our videos. We just didn't see a very good use for it. If you're an Uber driver or a, a Lyft driver or something of that nature where you need to record the interior of the cab of your vehicle, then that interior camera is probably something that's important to you and you can connect an interior camera to it as well as a rear cam. We don't use that on the 139. All we wanted was the dash cam uh, for safety reasons and law enforcement reasons as well as, as footage for our videos. Now. Is the A139 a bad camera? No, it's not. It's been a great camera. It's a little bit larger in physical size, and it's worked very, very well. And if you want 4K road footage uh, for your dash cam, the A139 is by far uh, just a great, great, great camera. We've been very, very pleased with it. You can add cameras to it. You can add the rear camera. You can add the interior camera. You, you've got an external mic connection and it will handle up to a 512 gigabyte micro SD card. Now the prices are significantly different. If you purchase the standard A139 off of Amazon, it's $250-ish. If you just need a 1080p camera uh, with set it and forget it, it's less than a hundred bucks. And for that reason, we really like the A119 V3 camera. Hopefully this has given you some different ideas on the two cameras and what you need. We highly, highly, highly recommend if you're driving an RV, whether it be a motorhome or a tow behind or anything of that nature, having a dash cam, even if you're just running to get groceries to the store, uh, having a dash cam is so important. You can just tell law enforcement, would you like a copy of my dash cam footage? Insurance companies will ask if you have a dash cam, if you have an incident, and you can provide that footage. You know, I had a comment uh, a while back that said, well, yeah, but if it's my fault, well, if it's my fault, then I should stand up and, and 
take responsibility for my actions, such as when we were merging onto that freeway. If we had had an incident, I would have said that was my fault. This is what I was doing and, you know, moved on. But if it's somebody else's fault, and we've all been there, somebody that can't merge correctly, somebody that jumps in front of us and slams on their brakes, uh, somebody that, that, that is crisscrossing in front of us uh, because they're too lazy to try to jump behind a slow RV and get off at the next exit. There's always situations while you're RVing, and to have a good dash cam is a definite necessity. As I said earlier, we don't normally do video reviews, but we've had questions on the 4K dash cam, and we just wanted to show you what we, how we felt on these dash cams. The most important thing is to have the dash cam and have it in your rig. All right, I'm gonna wrap this one up. So remember, it all starts with an idea. Turn those ideas into reality, guys, and make some great memories. Hopefully we'll see you on the road. Bye-bye.